Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm going to be reading a poem called Search for My Tongue, <coughs> and it is by a lady called Sajata Bat. And she is um, American, she's an American lady, but she is of Indian heritage. And her first language is um, Gujarati, which happens to be my first language. And the poem explores her struggle with identity. So she moved over to America when she was 12 years old, and Gujarati was the only language that she spoke. So the poem kind of has two purposes. The first purpose is for um, you to understand her struggle. Is she English, no, I don't know English, sorry, is she American or is she Indian? And she tries to show that through speaking English and Gujarati in this poem. And also, the second purpose is for a monolingual audience to understand what it is like to only speak one language and how isolated you can feel if you don't speak the language of, um, I suppose, the indigenous population. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. big, big, big words. Okay, okay. all right, okay, excellent. Right, so it's called Search for My Tongue. So it's, she says, <coughs> you ask me what I mean by saying that I have lost my tongue. I ask you, what would you do if you had two tongues in your mouth and lost the first one, the mother tongue, and could not really know the other, the foreign tongue. You could not use them both together, even if you thought that way. And if you lived in a place you had to speak a foreign tongue, your mother tongue would rot, rot and die in your mouth until you had to spit it out. I thought I spit it out, but overnight, while I dream, Mane hatu ke aki jeep aki basha me tuki nai kiche, paranto ratre sapnama mari basha mari basha pachi aveche, full niche mari basha mari jeep modama kileche, full niche mari basha mari jeep modama bakeche. It grows, it grows back, a stump of a shoot, grows longer, grows moist, and grows strong veins. It ties the other tongue in knots. The bud opens, the bud opens in my mouth, and it pushes the other tongue aside. Every time I think I've forgotten, I think I've lost the mother tongue, it blossoms out of my mouth. So the point is that by the end of the poem, she's actually come to the conclusion that she actually is very much Indian um, and she's not going to lose her first language, which is Gujarati, but she will also continue to speak in the foreign tongue, which is English to her. Firstly, uh, Wilfred Owen is a bit of a personal sort of hero of mine. He's um, not only is he a great poet, but someone who actually went out and fought in the war and um, in the First World War. And this poem was written in response to um, Jessie Pope, who was um, you know, producing a lot of propaganda poems at the time, but she was writing without the, ex the actual battlefield experience. So he took what he saw on the battlefield and turned it into a poem. And unfortunately, he didn't survive the First World War. So um, I suppose, as an icon, he is one of, you know, someone who died young, I suppose, and um, you know, fought bravely but didn't make it. Okay, so this is Dolce de Coromest. <coughs> Bent double, like old beggars under sacks. Knock-kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge. Till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue. Deaf even to the hoots of tired, outstripped five nines that drop behind. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was stumbling and yelling out and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me. Guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear, at every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as cud, of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie. Dolce et decorum est pro patria mori. Thank you.